I'm back to one of the things that I do quite often and I do to help me out. We belong to a program called CSA, Community Supported in Agriculture. And what it is, we get all of our produce, our fruits, our vegetables from a farmer in Ramona. And when you do buy your produce locally grown, you use less gas and oil to get your produce. It reduces your carbon footprint. And it's one of the things that you can do to help the animals. So if you're interested in the CSA, Google CSA and then your hometown. So CSA Los Angeles, CSA Las Vegas, and I've got 20 different programs to pull up. It's really interesting. And the produce is so much better. Now, 12,000 years ago, a large bird named Territory ran the skies of San Diego. They had a wingspan of 10 to 12 feet wide. We no longer have territory in our skies, but to represent them, we have some California. Now, I'm a San Diego native. Anyone else from Southern California? Do you guys remember back in the 80s when these guys were on the news a lot? Do you remember why? Right, and it was causing what? And so they, their eggs were getting thin. They couldn't bring a hatchling to full term, and so they were going to go extinct. And they counted, and there were fewer than 22 left on planet Earth, which is terrible. So we got together with the Los Angeles Zoo, and we started a breeding and reintroduction program for them. And it's been so successful. So you guys ready for our new numbers? Okay, so from 22 back in the 80s, we now have over 417. Yeah, we're really proud of it. That's a zoo success story. And that's one of the things that the San Diego Zoo is doing to help the animals. Kangaroo Express stop number four on your right, right at the end of Elephant Odyssey. And if you look straight ahead, you'll see a round red sign. It says Map Location 10. And what they did is they constructed these signs in the zoo, and then they put corresponding dots on the map. Because we know that it's, a, it's kind of confusing to get around here. So what they did is they constructed these signs, and then they put corresponding dots on the map. So let's all practice together, all right? So this is Map Location Sign 10. Now look on your map for round red dot tent, and it just helps you relate where you are in the zoo and what it looks like on the map. So if you're feeling lost at any point, you can find one of this map locator signs, and then hopefully it'll help you get around a little bit more easily. African Kofi thematic zone on your right. It was the first thematic zone here at the zoo. Now it's the smallest, and it represents the birds, plants, and animals from Central Africa. And in one moment, I'm going to point out a bird that's part of the trophy. You'll see it in a second as we come around the corner. It's called the Batelor Eagle. Batelor is a French word that means tightrope walker or acrobat. And they got that name because they have a short, stubby, nubby tail. So when they fly, they appear to be poorly balanced. They're not, but they have that appearance. They teeter back and forth, and that's how they got the name tightrope walker. Let's see if we can find them in there. So yeah, right there, right in the front, on the right hand side, and then one at the top, right in the smack dab in the middle by the rock. Now, bachelor eagles are one of the few bird species that also exhibit sexual dimorphism, just like the lions do. Think about it, most birds, you cannot tell the gender just by looking at them. In the bachelor eagle, you're able to tell the female because she's uh, significantly larger than the male, and when she's ready to mate, she does an itchy dance in the air. Now, this region of the zoo is called Africa Rocks. A lot of construction about to happen here. They're going to renovate the whole area. Now, what happened is a local philanthropist, Mr. Reedy, said he would donate $10 million if we could raise $20 million, and they're going to make this a whole new Madagascar habitat. So if you're thinking that you want to contribute to the renovation process, head to our website, sandiegozoo.org, and then you can contribute to the new area. There's other things you can contribute as well. They have over 130 conservation programs for the animals. They even have a wish list where you can contribute something specific, like a water dish or a leash for my favorite part of sandingazoo.org. They have animal camps. So if you're ever at work and you're really, really bored, click on our polar bear camps or panda camps, watch the animals, and you can pretend like you're back on vacation here at the world famous San Diego Zoo. No, not work out. Yeah, they're called Chacoan Peccary, and they are not 
pig. They are totally different from a pig species. Their stomachs are structured differently, so are their tusks. And they come from a tiny area in South America. Now, earlier I told you about the Camp Critters Animal Experience, and then there's a show that I want to talk to you about on the back of your map. It's called Australiana 2. It's happening today at 6.30, and it is supposed to be fantastic. I haven't seen it yet. It's only about a week old, but from what I've heard, it is phenomenal. And if you've seen some of our night shows in the past, what I've been told is that this is the best night show that we've had in years. So when you're planning out the rest of your day, do plan to stick around until 6.30. Come right here to the Hunt Amphitheater. Check out Australiana 2, Return to the Outback. From what I've heard, it is well, well worth your time. I also heard just for the moms on the bus, for the ladies on the bus, I heard that the lead actor has really awesome abs. I haven't seen him, but I heard he's awesome abs. They were noteworthy, I was told. All right, so, Hornbill on your right. Now this is kind of cool. I just found out about this. So Asian Hornbill, I guess in their local Malaysia, um, the local people were hunting and killing the birds so they could get their feathers for their rituals and ceremonies. So apparently we, the Phoenix Zoo, just sent some emissaries to the area.